Hey everyone, it's thrifting time! Our first stop is going to be this Goodwill that's in the same shopping center as a Savers thrift store. We'll check out this Goodwill first and then we'll go check out the Savers. Over with the video games, I've got 9 copies of Wii Fit and Wii Fit Plus, and then there's also a couple of old PC games down here. This is one I've never heard of, uh, Cy Siberia? There's an advertisement for the Omega Stone on the pack. This is an older PC game, and like I said, it's one that I'm not familiar with and it's cheap, so I'm gonna grab that. I also found a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator 98, which I didn't have, and I do collect a lot of these mid to late 90s Microsoft software titles, so I'm gonna grab this as well to add to my collection. And then of course, they've got a Sims expansion pack. There's only Sims expansion packs at Goodwill. Now, even though this Goodwill does have a section for video games with the other media, it's still always worth looking through all the other DVDs and CDs anyways, because I always find more video games and computer games. I found Star Wars The Old Republic, which I don't need that, I already have. But I also found this uh, Operation Flashpoint for Windows 95, 98, ME, and XP. I've never heard of this before. And it looks like that's probably because this is actually from somewhere in the United Kingdom based on the pricing there on the left. This game looks kind of cheesy, but it's also an old computer game which I always love trying out, so I'm going to grab this too since it's only a few dollars. If it sucks, I can always drop it back off here like somebody did with this Operation Predator 2 DVD. It looks like it's from Weber's originally, I'm not familiar with that store, but then you can see there's some other Goodwills price tag on here, so somebody must have bought this at Goodwill, decided they still didn't want it, and dropped it off at this Goodwill. It's kind of interesting to see the life cycle of a unwanted DVD. Over mixed in with the music CDs, I found another old PC game. I found Microsoft Baseball 2000. This is another one of those old Microsoft titles that I don't have, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this as well to add to my collection. Now I always go check out the cassette tapes, and this one caught my eye, the Crystal Light Body Workout. This is hilariously 80s. I wonder if this was something you had to mail away for, you know, by sending in proofs of purchase for Crystal Light. But yeah, 1984 General Foods Corporation. I ended up grabbing this for 50 cents to laugh at, but I'm glad that I did because I was able to use it to test something else that I buy a little bit later instead of having to use one of my good tapes to test it. Now here's something I haven't seen in forever. These are Star Wars Episode One Cup Toppers from Taco Bell. These are all the way back from 1999, and there was 12 of these, I think, that Taco Bell had. I think there was special Episode 1 cups that went along with these, but the few times that I have seen these since the original release of them, they've always just been the cup toppers. I do remember one time seeing a full set of them on Craigslist. I forget what they were asking for this set, but it was a lot more than $1.49 per topper. Over in the books, I found the Pop Vocabulary book, which contains more than 1,500 contemporary, enlightening, humorous words and phrases. And it looks like this was a Christmas gift to somebody at some point. So it's kind of sad when you find old gifts dropped off at the thrift store. I had to see when this book was from to see how contemporary it was, and it says copyright 1996, so not very contemporary. So then I decided I needed to take a look at what was actually in here, and it's things like Hubbub, Huckster, Hullabaloo. Wow, yeah, not, not contemporary. But still kind of funny, actually. This is definitely another one of those things that really only could have existed in the 90s. I wonder if people considered it fantabulous back then. Time for a vocabulary makeover from 1996, then maybe this reference slash study aid is for you. Over in the electronics section, they had a stack of these retro VR headsets with a really old school PBS public broadcasting logo on it. I actually really like that logo. These are just cheap plasticky things that you put your phone in and then it simulates virtual reality when you put them on. They're really usually not too great, but again, these are kind of neat with that old PBS logo. It's just interesting that they have so many of them here. On the way out, we saw this cabinet sitting here, which at first I thought, hey, that's kind of cool with that paint job on it. I got to looking closer at it though, and it is pretty banged up and rusted out and everything, but if this had been in good condition with that paint job on it, I would probably have this hanging up in my garage next to my toolbox. 
It looks like something out of the skate shop in Skate or Die. Let's head out of here now and go to the savers next door. There doesn't seem to be as many savers as there are Goodwills in the Phoenix area, so I do like that there's one right next door to one of my local Goodwills. And they do still do the glass case thing here, and they've got a Nintendo 3DS XL, I think, and then an old Tiger Woods Game Boy Advance game. Nothing too interesting, really. Over with the art, they had some really pretty photographs of what I think are places in Arizona, but then they also had this really old picture of William Shatner as Captain Kirk. This looks like it's straight out of some teenage nerd's bedroom in the 1960s. I thought maybe it was autographed on the back, so I took a look at the back of the frame to see if it was easy to open, and I did open it off camera, and it's not autographed, it's just an old headshot of William Shatner. Now over here what looks like is the prototype Bored Ape NFT. That's, that's really what this is giving me, is Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT vibes, but this is from 1970. And also, unlike those NFTs, this is a real, actual thing that exists that you can hold and is not just a digital receipt for nothing. Over in the electronics section, I found this Iowa bookshelf-sized stereo. It didn't have its original speakers, but it does have a cassette deck and a CD player and several inputs on the back, and it was only $649. i am in the market for a retro bookshelf-sized stereo like this for my loft, and this one's from 1999, so this pretty much fits the bill perfectly. It's got inputs on the back, so you can add a turntable and a mini disc player, and then it's got two speaker outs plus an out for a subwoofer. I ended up grabbing this, and we'll see at the end of the video that it works great. And here we are at store number three, and you'll notice that costume sign up there. This is actually older footage that I thought I lost, but then it magically reappeared on an SD card, so we'll take a look at it now. Of course, I went and started poking through the video games and stuff first, and it's just your typical Wii stuff, you know, weight loss things, Just Dance, which looks like it was a Target exclusive version of Just Dance, I didn't know that was a thing. A couple of old PC games here that I'm not really interested in, some antivirus software that nobody needs, but then I saw this, this National Geographic. Arizona, which is like maps and things of Arizona and GPS stuff. You'll see there it's meant to work with Windows 95 all the way through XP. I always like finding old software like this because this is stuff they don't really make anymore. There's no need for it anymore with modern smartphones. They all have GPS built in now and you can look at all of the topographic maps you want for free on the internet. This was pretty elaborate packaging too. I, I guess maybe you, they didn't intend for you to keep the big outer box maybe and you could just put the smaller box on the shelf. If I had spent a hundred bucks on something like this though, I would have kept the outer box. Yeah, a hundred dollars for this and now it's at Goodwill for $3.29. Over in the music CDs, I found a couple of old PC games mixed in. There's Command and Conquer Generals, and then there's a copy of StarCraft over here, and then also a copy of the StarCraft Brood War expansion set. All three of these, well, two of them are games plus the expansion set, they're all great. I already have all three of these, so I just left them here for somebody else to find. This store did something cool and took all their old VHS box sets and put them all together on one shelf, and it's pretty awesome to look at. We've got the Rocky film collection here, at least the ones that were out at the time when this was manufactured. And then the Star Wars original trilogy, which I had this VHS box set when I was a kid. And then there's a set of tapes here of sports blooper features. I'm sure that's hilarious, old bloopers from the 70s and 80s probably. And then Lonesome Dove. I remember when that was on TV, I think. Warbirds of World War II Volume 2, that's a lot of VHS tapes. Roy Rogers, a lot of Western stuff here. The King of Cowboys. And then down here I think was the biggest VHS box set, seven VHS tapes of Century of Warfare. Now here's something weird, this is a Zavix port from Zavix, and this was a video game system that was released in 2004 that there's a good chance you've never heard of. It was a fitness and sports based video game system that used special controllers that had motion controls and there were games like tennis and baseball. Is this starting to sound familiar at all? 
It sounds an awful lot like the Nintendo Wii, except for that this was released in 2004, two years before the Nintendo Wii. What's also weird about this thing is that even though it was released in 2004, it uses cartridges for the games. There was about two dozen games developed for it, but it's not clear if they were all actually released. I thought about grabbing this for a second to mess with because it was so cheap, but then I remembered that every video that I've seen about this thing shows that it's absolute dog crap and I don't need it. Speaking of things that nobody needs, here's a space-saving phone central phone organizer, which is twice the size of the phone, so not sure how it's a space saver, but seeing these kind of things always makes me laugh because nobody's ever going to need this ever again. I don't think people have CDs, diskettes, and PDAs anymore to store next to their big old phone, but maybe I'm wrong because on the bottom of this box there's a year of 2004 on this, and then it also lists it being manufactured by Cantech and then a website, cantech.com. I checked that website and they're still around and they sell a lot of modern office products, but they also still sell this for $35, so maybe somebody does still need this. At first I thought this was a cable modem, but it's actually a HP Thin Client. It's a little small computer and these usually ran things like Windows 7 Embedded or if they're a little bit older, Windows XP. This one ran Windows 7 originally, but what's cool about these is you can do things like make them run Windows 98 or MS-DOS and then use them as little retro gaming computers. Since it was less than 5 bucks, I grabbed it to see what kind of weird crap I could get it to do. When I first saw this thing with a full-size keyboard, I didn't know what it was. I just saw Neo by AlphaSmart and I had to look it up and it turns out it's a standalone word processor. When I think of standalone word processors, I think of those big, huge, like, luggable suitcase things from the early 80s. This thing is, like, super tiny and weighs nothing, and it looks like you can just plug it into a PC or a printer. I had no idea that little word processors like this even existed. It's kind of a neat little thing to find here amongst all the cheap keyboards. Now here is a true piece of the 1980s, the Bedazzler Rhinestone and Stud Setter. I wonder how many denim jackets and pairs of jeans this thing bedazzled. I didn't know this until I just looked it up for this video, but they still make the Bedazzler, although I'm guessing this one's vintage based upon the box. There's no website or anything listed on the box, so this at least has to be from a time before everything had a website. Do you think bedazzled stuff will ever make a comeback? Now here's something I don't think I've ever seen at Goodwill before, multiple old candy vending machines. Right after I walked away from these, some guy was super excited to find them and he ended up buying all of them and I hope he scrubs them out before he uses them because they were really dirty. That's going to wrap it up for this store though. Let's go take a look at some of the stuff that I bought this episode. Alright, so here's some of the things that I grabbed this episode. We've got that HP Thin Client there, which I haven't had much time to do with except for to test and make sure it works. It still needs a lot of cleaning and everything, and then I think I'm going to try and install Windows 98 on it. I have another older HP Thin Client that I used to run Windows 98, so I might see if this one can do a better job. And then here's some of the PC games that I picked up. I picked up this uh, Siberia here just because I've never heard of it before and it was cheap, so... If I don't like it, I'll just drop it back off at Goodwill. Basically, just rented it to see if I like it. And then I grabbed uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 98, which I was super happy to find, as well as Microsoft Baseball here. Now, like I mentioned in the video earlier, I, I collect the the Microsoft titles like this. Like, here's the Home Cooking with Master Chefs with Julia Child, which I did a video on a long time ago that nobody watched. But I'll, I'll put a link up in the corner. But... I have quite a few titles. I've got Encarta 95, Golf. There's even a there's a Magic School Bus one here as well, which is kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to add these two to that collection. And then also I just grabbed this because it was so cheesy looking, and I love these, like, generic cheesy collections of shareware games. So um, I've played Doom and I've played Kilo Blaster before. I'm assuming Jazz is Jazz Jackrabbit. Oh, I didn't even notice the epic pinball down there. It's like... In such a light font but yeah it's kind of a weird collection from on hand software which i've never heard of before so i'll add that to the shareware collection and then also i did grab this cassette tape so let's go test out the uh new stereo that i picked up over there so here's that iowa stereo that i picked up and i just grabbed a couple of cheap bookshelf speakers off of amazon 
I'll probably replace these later on down the road, but they actually look okay with the stereo and they, they sound okay too. And when I plugged this thing in, it, it fired up and it just works perfectly. I, I do need to find the remote because you can't do things like turn that demo mode off without the remote. So I got to find that, but everything on it works great. This surprised me too. I, I should have realized this, but they're, you know, they're soft touch controls for the CD player. So the lid is actually motorized, which is pretty cool. I'm going to pop a CD in real quick and we can see how the CD player works. So then you don't have to push it down either. It's just that I know that's super simple, but I think that is so cool. So yeah, there it goes. It's playing it and play. And I'm going to skip a couple tracks in because the first ones aren't great. There we go. Yeah, the display is nice and bright. Let's get to some of the music from Quartet. Come on. There we go. Turn it up a little bit. Like I said, it sounds really good even with these cheap speakers. Okay, let's turn that down. And then let's switch over to the tape modes. So there's a function mode here. It also has, there's tape, then it has AM, FM radio, obviously an auxiliary input, which you can hook like a turntable to. Uh, the CD player, and then there's some sort of mini disc functionality too that I've got to look more into because I do have a mini disc player. But let's pop in this uh, Crystal Light body workout tape. It actually looks like it has real music on it. I was kind of hoping that maybe it has some sort of intro at the beginning that won't get me a copyright strike. So if this starts playing like real music, we'll have to stop it. But uh. Let's see. Let's try rewind. Yep, the rewind works. There we go. And play. Hi, I'm Linda Evans, and I'm thrilled you decided to send for the Crystal Light Body Workout. Oh, there it is. You know, the most important thing about getting into shape or staying in shape is that you develop a positive self-image. So be positive and think positive. Oh, this is great. You join me and my fitness instructor. Bob is going to count the beat as you and I do the Crystal Light Body Workout together. As we begin our workout, I want you to stand with your feet. Not sure how much of this I can play without triggering copyright. Okay, let's try another tape. Maybe one that won't get me a copyright strike. We'll try out some some vaporwave on this thing and see how that sounds. Yep, that works pretty good too. I don't know if this will be this stereo's permanent home or not, but I needed some sort of stereo up here in the loft so I could listen to music and also so I can plug my TV into and when I'm playing things like my TurboGrafx-16, I can listen to that music blasting out of this. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Thrifting Time. I hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the first episode of Thrifting Time for 2023. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the Retail Archaeology channel.